Hello everyone, uh, my name is Luca Tadesco and I'm an independent vulnerability researcher from Venice, Italy. And I've been focusing on Apple's products and uh, I'm very attracted by jailbreaking techniques. And I'm the author of several XNU kernel uh, CVEs and exploits, which, I which I've been open sourcing um, on GitHub and Twitter. Um, and the XNU kernel is a quite big target. Um, for jailbreakers, but in Yasmite, uh, Apple has started enforcing car kernel extension signatures. Uh, but um, in El Capitan, they also introduced uh, system integrity protection, which is a system wide kernel enforced sandbox profile that prevents access to system resources. And there are several ways to bypass this, but um, attacking the kernel is a viable way to disable it and uh, we pass also the sandbox. So I'll be uh, starting with the, a very brief um, introduction on the, um, the kernel heap. And in particular, um, I will be talking about Zalloc, uh, which is um, the zone allocator. Um, most other allocators uh, rely on Zalloc. Um, there are three functions which you can call. Uh, Zanit, which can create a zone, um, and Zalloc, which allocates an allocation of a zone, and the free, which uh, frees an allocation back uh, into the free list. Um, and each zone has a uh, last in first out linked list uh, containing free chunks, and allocations in a zone are same sized. When you allocate uh, from a zone without any free chunks av available, a new page is mapped in, and the page is split in chunks, and each chunk is added to the free list. And this allocator has been discussed very much by Stefan Esser. Um, so if you want to detail uh, more about it, uh, you can just read his papers. But for exploitation, what we care about is that there is nine line metadata for allocated chunks, and there is free list metadata on free chunks. Um, but the free list metadata has been hardened uh, since iOS 6. Uh, so um, these days, application metadata is the most common target. Uh, and I say the only one, because after all, you can do pretty much everything by corrupting application metadata. Um, different zones use different areas of memory, so you can't uh, do a heap buffer overflow in a zone and corrupt another zone. Uh, but this does not apply to large allocations. So if you have an allocation which is larger than the page size, you can pretty easily uh, get an adjacent allocation from another zone. And then there is Calloc, which is a more malloc like interface to Zalloc, uh, which registers several zones with the various sizes. Um, the only difference between Calloc and malloc is that when you use free to free a block, you also have to pass in the size, uh, because as I said, there is no uh, inline metadata in allocated chunks. And so um, free has to pick the right zone to free the allocation back on. Um, this is the output uh, of the print calloc, which shows you uh, all the zones registered by calloc. Uh, this does not work in El Capitan for some reason, but uh, just running the print grep calloc should work. So um, I don't know why, but it is. Um, for application metadata, uh, there are several targets. The most common one uh, is VM map copy, which has been introduced uh, by Terje Mant and Mark Dowd uh, in their iOS 6 security presentation uh, back uh, like three years ago. And it's just a structure that is used to represent a copy of some data. And if this data is smaller than a page, um, the, kernel, the, kernel, the kernel heap is used. Um, many jailbreaks have targeted this structure in the past. Um, for various reasons. Uh, the biggest reason why this structure is very good is because you can control the size which is passed to calloc when you create it uh, from user land. Uh, and so you can just put it in any zone and you can do pretty much anything with it uh, without being affected by sandboxing, uh, but just using Mac messages uh, us by using out of line data. So this is the structure in, uh, before a capitan. And as you can see, uh, there is a size um, there is a pointer to the data, and there is also the calloc size, which is used to free 
this structure. Um, so if you want, say you have a buffer overflow, you can just corrupt the size uh, or corrupt the data pointer to do arbitrary infolix. So um, here's uh, the anatomy of a pre El Capitan kernel exploit, um, Tipone, which I've been uh, working on and I've released in August this year. Um, it used to be zero day at the time. And the core issue was a type confusion in uh, handling Mac ports in an IOKit function. Uh, I'll explain more about this later, but first uh, I have to explain uh, page zero. Page zero is essentially um, the first page in another space on uh, a Mac op pro process. And essentially it's used to um, trap all null pointer the references. Um, Linux does this as well. Uh, I'm not sure about Windows, but probably Windows as well. Uh, and Apple enforces this in kernel, but uh, not for 32-bit binaries. So if you have a 32-bit binary, you can just skip the page zero, and you can allocate whatever you want uh, at null. Um, this is important because, as you will see, uh, IO service open extended ac uh, accepts various arguments, and these are converted from user land to kernel land by essentially uh, MIG, which is an uh, automated inter interface generator between uh, a, a, cli a Mac client and a Mac server. Um, when you pass uh, arguments to a function that travels MIG, essentially MIG itself uh, uh, serializes and unserializes all the arguments you pass in. But um, in this particular function, uh, you can't see much, but there is no check on the task you pass in. And so if you pass in a task which is not actually a task, um, it will pass it down as null to the user client. User clients are essentially uh, a driver uh, object which can be used in user land. Uh, code runs in kernel land, but uh, you can call every function you want from user land. And when you create one, uh, you essentially pass in the task, and um, a particular user client, which is the disk image one, uh, uses this task structure to read uh, a pointer, and it will uh, do an OR on the pointer, which, if you do the type confusion, is read from page zero. And so we can essentially corrupt memory in kernel, uh, as we wish to anything we want. So, um, first of all, we need to locate something. And for this, I used a HIMP info leak to locate an object in uh, a calloc. And, but we need to locate a VM map copy uh, to be able to do arbitrary info leaks. And then we have to corrupt the VM map copy. Um, from there, we can derive the KSLR slide. And from there, you can just run drop in kernel. So um, this is the um, kernel heap. But it's fragmented, so I'll locate uh, two objects, uh, leak the pointers. They are not adjacent, so I f free the first one. And then allocate a VM map copy in. And allocate a new object. From this new object, uh, we leak the pointer. And we see it's not adjacent. So we free the first object and allocate a VM map copy in as placeholder. So we allocate another object and leak again. Uh, these two objects are adjacent, so we can just free the first one, allocate a VM map copy in, and then we have this memory layout. And we know the pointers to both these structures. So um, we use our memory corruption primitive to do this, essentially. And once we do this, we can read past heap boundaries and have um, read access to the vtable pointer of a C++ object, which points to the kernel uh, data. And kernel data is lead by in the KSLR slide. And by just doing a subtraction, you can find the, the ASLR random value. And this is the result, uh, local privilege escalation. Uh, it can also be implemented in a sandbox ex escaping way. But yeah, this was before El Capitan. Uh, however, in El Capitan, 
the structure has been changed a lot. Um, essentially, what they did was to remove the size uh, to three and remove the key data pointer. Uh, so now we just have a structure which contains um, type, an offset, and size. And we can't do much with this because if you, if you change the size uh, past heap allocation boundaries, you will cause a wrong free in the wrong zone and it will corrupt the, the adjacent allocation. Um, and the pointer to the data has been removed. Uh, this prevents us from reading a, a, a pointer to the adjacent VMAP copy by putting two VMAP copy uh, one after the other. And you can't write into this pointer to leak arbitrary kernel memory. Uh, for this, you need new techniques. But for adjacent data, we can just corrupt and then uh, rewrite the leaked data um, so it, it doesn't actually look corrupted. But the internal heap state is corrupted, so you have to clean up later. And it's also not very re reliable because it involves a reallocation. And if you get sh scheduled out, another task might create another location which falls into the place where you freed uh, the wrong zone. And that will crush the kernel very likely. But we can do this. And since you can't read the data pointer of another uh, structure like this, you have to find another structure um, to do a uh, heap info leak. And the free list is an easy target. So you can just allocate two adjacent VMAP copy structures, free the second, and corrupt the first to increase size past heap allocation uh, boundaries. By reading the first um, VMAP copy out, um, you corrupt the memory, but you also leak the, um, the free chunk. And by leaking the free chunk, you can um, allocate a new VM map copy with the free chunk in, and the kernel won't crash if you do this, but you will be able to know a pointer to the next uh, free allocation. So um, if you create two new VM map copy structures, you will know the pointer to the second one you, you've created. But a big issue with this is that you can't do arbitrary memory info leaks. You can't read, say, the kernel text to find the gadgets for your app chain. And so you can use another object. Um, in this case, uh, I used OS data, which is an object uh, which is used by IOKit, uh, implemented by libkern. And you can use IO service open extended uh, to create them at will from user land. Uh, Stefan Hesser had a very nice talk about this, uh, iOS kernel heap Armageddon. It's a bit dated because his techniques don't work anymore, but uh, it explains how libkernel objects work, and that's very useful. So you just have to allocate two adjacent VMAP copy structures, corrupt the first one size, read out the data, change the second structure size to 24, which is the difference between the size of VMAP copy and the nice data object in memory. Write it back, read the second VMAP copy out, causing a wrong free into the calloc 48 zone, which is the zone where OS data lives. And now you have an OS data overlapping a VMAP copy's data. And you can read write to it in userland. And the vtable pointer leaks the KS lure slide. And the data pointer leaks a pointer to arbitrary user controlled data. So if you change the data pointer and set the capacity to a very high value, so it, when you free the OS data, it doesn't actually corrupt the data you've just read. Um, you can just use uh, IOKit functions to read out the OS data fairly easily. Um, here's the memory layout of two adjacent VMAP copies. And then we have some heap corruption. Uh, when we free the corrupted structure, this will happen. Uh, as you can see, uh, these two objects are essentially overlapping in memory. And so when you create a new VM map copy, uh, you can't read much, but OK. When you create another VM map copy, uh, the data of the VM map copy overlaps the data of the second one, the header of the second one. So you can just control um, the size and shrink it. And when you free the second one, uh, it will be in a smaller zone, uh, in the OS data zone. So when you create another OS data, this is what happens, and you have 
read-write access to pretty much everything. And you can also derive the KS alert slide because OS data is a C++ subject. And so you can find out a V table pointer very easily. Okay, this is something new. Uh, because for this we have to use adjacent allocations. Um, but creating adjacent allocations is not easy. Most deep attacks require them, but uh, the best way right now is to try randomly. But r trying randomly, uh, you introduce essentially um, a probabilistic uh, part of the exploit because you can try to guess by picking a very high number of allocations to run out the free list and map in a new page, which is then deterministic. But if you don't uh, get it right, you can run out of the page when you do your heap overflow, and that will crash the kernel. So you have probabilistic exploits, uh, but as I said, the layout of newly mapped in pages is deterministic. Um, but ma mapping pages is expensive. But is it expensive enough to detect it, to detect it in user land? And the answer is yes. If you can see here, um, this is uh, in calloc 1024, um, which has four allocations per page. And you can see that every four allocations I create, um, the time it takes to create the allocation essentially skyrockets. And I use a heap info leak over there, so you can see that every time the time spikes, a new page has been mapped in, and all subsequent allocations are adjacent in memory. So yes, it is expensive enough to detect it in user land. Um, a good target to time is VM map copy in, which is the function uh, which creates our VM map copy structure. So the general idea is to create a bunch of VM map copy structures, uh, VM map messages, and then read them out. So we allocate a lot of chunks, put them in the, the free list. And then when you recreate those allocations, uh, they will be straight from the free list, so you don't have to allocate any new page. So if you keep an average, that will represent an average of the time it takes for the free list to return an allocation, not for a new page to be mapped in memory. Um, and so you just keep those allocated in and keep timing Mac, Mac messages. And once in a while you will have a Mac message which will take much more than normal to create um, the VM map copy structure. And when this happens, uh, you have, you, it's very likely that a new page has been just mapped in. And we already know the number of allocations which should have been added to the free list. As such, we can just keep timing Mac messages, expecting a number which is close to the average. Uh, when a time spike uh, is expected to happen, uh, if it happens, we have a full page of adjacent allocations. If it doesn't, we have just failed and we can just retry. Uh, you can do this uh, for multiple, multiple pages, uh, because if you, know, if you run out of a page, you create a new page, and if you create an, the same number of allocations, uh, the page will run out, so you will allocate a new page. You can do this uh, over and over to have additional reliability on your exploit. Uh, you can easily craft the heap layout by poking holes in the allocated page. Uh, you can just reallocate any object you wish. Um, there is just one catch. You have to limit the number of allocations you create because if you create too many, the kernel will crash. But on failure, you can just fall back to a probabilistic approach. So this won't hurt reliability of your exploit. It's going to only increase it. And in some rare cases, uh, precise la heap layout control is required to have any form of reliability. An example is IOHID families CVE. Uh, well, this CVE is an user after free I found, which has been fixed in the latest version of El Capitan. It's been found independently by multiple parties, and it's been used by Pangu9, as well as my own Nepone exploit. On Macos 10, it required uh, root to achieve um, the exploit, but on iOS you only actually needed a sandbox escape. Um, essentially the bug was a textbook use after free. You would create a device and then you would terminate it, but when you terminated this device you can just keep carrying on operations on it. Um, this will cause use after free. 
Um, the core issue is because Apple in the, used the wrong function in the terminate device function. Essentially, what they did was to use OS safe release, which is not safe uh, to release the object. Uh, instead, what they wanted to do was to use OS safe release null, which is safe and which doesn't cause any use after free. Um, this was not an issue before uh, Yasmite, but for some reason they decided to change the release code into OS safe release, which doesn't do anything particular. So I'm not sure why they did it, why they did it, but they've done it. So, yeah. So uh, here is the virtual call we can do on our use after freed object. Um, as you can see, uh, you can control uh, timestamp, which is the first argument, and you can see this here, controlled register. And the second argument, uh, well, the second argument, the first argument of, uh, since this is C++, it's a pointer to the object which is freed, and we have full control on this object. So we control the data, we control, we can reallocate another object and just cause a virtual call to corrupt uh, the object itself. Uh, we can do this on nosemap uh, OS 10 uh, very easily by just pointing the table pointer in user land and jumping to user land memory. But newer Macs have uh, some new mitigations, Smap and Smap. Um, not many maps, not many Macs have Smap. Many have Smap. Um, on nosemap Mac, Macs, you can just point the table in user land and do wrap with the KSLR info leak. On iOS, which has both SMAP and SMAP, but there are no implementation of it, uh, you need to use both a heap info leak as well as the KSLR info leak. But there is an alternate technique to pull this off without ha having any heap info leak. And this requires a tightly controlled heap layout. Essentially, the trick is that the object we, uh, which is freed uh, resides in the calloc 256 zone. And the vtable uh, call index is at a very high number. So um, if you abuse the free list, you can do this, essentially. You poke and hold to in the first allocation on a chunk of adjacent allocations you control. And then you free the use after freed object. And when you do this, uh, memory layout uh, of the free chunk will look very similar to the C++ object's memory layout. Because essentially, a free chunk, uh, first eight bytes are pointer to the next free chunk. And the first eight bytes of a C++ object are pointer to the vtable. And as such, they're both pointers. And when you do the use after free, the first eight bytes of the free chunk will be used as a vtable. But it points to our controlled memory. So we can just control the particular chunk of memory which will be, which will, um, be the target of our virtual call. And as you can see, the virtual call thinks it's accessing a C++ object which has a vtable pointer that points to kernel data. But in reality, this is what happens. Um, we can now control the instruction pointer and the second argument. The first argument is a pointer to the use after freed allocation, but um, the KSLR slide is not leaked yet. In Napone, I used the CAS info, which could be considered cheating, but it's allowed on C protected uh, El Capitan. And there are also al alternative KSLR leaking strategies. Uh, you can just abuse the, the use after free, like a type confusion. To further disable system integrity protection, we can just use a function called CSR set all. Of all. Uh, Pedro Villaja, a CX reverser, discussed this for his rootful kernel extension. And we can just redirect, redirect the virtual call to this function. And as long as the first argument is not null, it will disable SIP for good. And wrap is not needed, needed for this at all. 
so I'm a bit early here, so we'll show you a demo. It's actually a video because uh, this particular Mac has been patched. So here you go. This is the kernel version, and I try to create a file in a system integrity protection protected directory, and it fails, as you can see. But if I run a binary, it will succeed very, very easily. Um, I'm actually a bit early on this, so I will explain better how the kernel exploit itself worked. Uh, what? Sorry. Okay. Um, essentially, the kernel exploit um, just use the user after free in the technique I showed earlier to um, disable uh, SIP by using the jump. Um, well, I've already explained this. Okay. Okay, so um, the rapid growth in uh, use of sandboxing technology is pushing many attackers to kernel attacks. Apple has been trying to harden the kernel heap for a very long time, and the Zalloc timing, timing attack can be very useful for attackers for, uh, to um, essentially determine the heap layout very easily. So um, I will talk about mitigations for this a bit, uh, because I've finished this very early. I'm very... Uh, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I've, I've rushed this, so I will talk a bit about it. Okay, so for mitigations, uh, XNU kernel does not have many of them. Apple has been trying to improve them, but it hasn't been working much. Uh, attackers keep trying to find new data structures to corrupt, to bypass all of their uh, mitigations. So recently, Apple uh, has been changing the map copy, but it's not enough, uh, as I showed. Uh, a better technique for them would have been to just introduce randomness by using XOR in size of all objects that point to data. Uh, use XOR in most pointers. I would advise to use XOR for um, C++ Vtable pointers, as well as free list using different random numbers. And um, yeah. Uh, XOR uh, with the random numbers for pretty much anything related to the heap, uh, uh, which they have been trying to do. I believe that in the newest uh, beta version of El Capitan, they've been changing the, the heap layout of the free list. Uh, I haven't done much research on this, but it's breaking my exploits, so I believe th this is what's happening. Uh, but it's not, still not enough because they keep living in objects which can be used for the same technique. Um, yeah, it's not uh, enough what Apple is doing right now. Um, so, yeah. Um, if you have uh, any question about the exploit, uh, I will answer you. Uh, Well, I'm, I'm so sorry about this, but uh, that I finished so early, but I've been rushing and I'm pretty, uh, it's my first time speaking, so I'm not uh, really, uh, you know, confident about this. And yeah, I'm very sorry about it. Uh, if you want me to explain anything to you, just ask and I will do my best. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what to do actually right now. <laughs> uh, where? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, essentially, uh, macro binaries uh, 
have uh, segments. Each segment describes a part of the other space. And most macro binaries have this page zero segment, which essentially maps a page which you can't unmap and you can't do anything on. So if the kernel tries to access this page, it will fail because it won't be readable, it won't be writable, it won't be executable, so you can't do anything with it. But uh, essentially what Apple did uh, was to add a check in the kernel to make sure that this page does indeed exist. But there are some very, very old uh, files which do not have the page zero segment. And I've asked Apple about it, and they told me that it's software that is on a very important uh, donut brick list. So they cannot uh, enforce page zero on 32-bit uh, binaries because of compatibility reasons. So essentially, if you have a macro binary which lacks page zero, uh, the kernel doesn't do anything about it, and you can just map anything you want as null. And so you can just call uh, VM, map, VM uh, allocate to allocate a page at zero. And you can write, read, and exact, ex execute anything you want of it. OK. Uh, can you deallocate the page zero of a binary with that page zero? Uh, you used to be able to. But um, since Yosemite, uh, Apple uh, has found out that there are many kernel bugs involving null. Um, I mean, it's not uh, 10 years ago we had this on Linux. Um, today we have this on Mac OS X. People are discovering zero day, which involves the null page. And so um, essentially what they did was to prevent um, all access to the page zero if a page zero has been mapped in. But uh, on 64-bit binaries, uh, you just, they just kill your process if you don't have a page zero. On 32-bit ones, they don't. So you can't just unmap it. Uh, you have to lock it to do anything for, for with the null page, essentially. Yeah? OK, I repeat the question. So uh, uh, essentially, what you ask is um, if there are t any technical question, really, uh, reasons for this. Uh, and my answer is no. There are, there are not any technical reasons for this. Apple does not use the page zero at all. Uh, but um, there is a list of donut break software. And they really care about it for some reason. I don't know why. but. I mean, uh, just blocking it would kill an entire class of kernel vulnerabilities, and there are a lots, there are lots of lots of lots of them in the kernel. So what? Well, uh, you could have a whitelist, but what exactly do you whitelist? Yeah, but I mean. Do you do a hash of the binary? Yeah, it's tricky. But um, Apple, uh, generally speaking, uh, is not good at fixing tricky problems, I believe. <laughs> um, they've done an awful lot of mistakes over the years. Uh, for example, uh, gatekeeper is a bit of a joke, in my opinion, because if you have any signed binary, which links to an unsigned library, uh, you can just run it, and it won't complain. Uh, you can just change the library and you have full code execution uh, out of Gatekeeper. And the reason why they didn't fix this is the same one why they didn't fix page zero. Because there is a compatibility list and they don't want to break it. And I believe that this is a very, very bad technical um, tech security point of view uh, for Apple to have. I mean, in iOS, they've been able to achieve grid security because they could break the rules, but they don't want to on uh, OS X. And it's a very big problem because many, many, many bugs stem from, for this, from this reason. Uh, any more questions about anything exploitation Apple? OK. Uh, where can you find the code for it? Uh, essentially, they, um, they scan 
the macro uh, for when you run an executable, they scan for all the segments of memory you describe in your executable. And if there is no segment that describes the page zero, and there is no segment for the page zero, which is essentially not readable, writable or executable, um, they kill you. So this is not, as I said, enforced on 32-bit, but on 64-bit, uh, any modification of the, um, the segment which involves page zero will get you killed. Yeah? There's something that prevents uh, somebody to uh, make an output that uh, enforces uh, the page zero? There's, well, there is something uh, that has been introduced in El Capitan that prevents this from happening, and it's system integrity protection. Uh, with it, you can't actually load any kernel uh, extension without a signature. Uh, essentially, uh, I've made a kernel extension myself. It's on my GitHub called NullGuard, which essentially disables uh, all access to the page uh, to all binaries which lack a page zero. Stefan SR has introduced uh, in his set YD guard uh, text uh, the same uh, um, kind of protection. So you can just install his uh, set swide guard or my null guard, uh, but in uh, newer versions you have to disable system integrity protection for it. So it's not really a good um, a good way, in my opinion, to fix it. Um, but yeah, in Yosmit you could. I'm not sure why Apple doesn't do something like if uh, system integrity protection is enabled, uh, block page zero. I, I have no idea why they don't do it, but it's how they're doing it. So they could very, very easily. It's just like one line of code change. Um, but <laughs> I'm not Apple, so I don't know their their thinking about it. I'm sorry, but okay. Uh, if you have any more question questions about iOS or OS six kernel exploitation. <laughs> that, that was it. <laughs>